in Ohio, there's a police chief who thought it was a good idea and just hilarious to put KKK, Ku Klux Klan on the back of some type of uniform on a desk inside of the precinct. Now this is a white police chief and he did this to a black cop. So I want you to see this footage, there's no sound to it because it's literally the footage inside of the precinct. So here's what you see, you see that yellow thing there? I want you to pay attention to that because something's about to happen. Here's the chief, what he's putting on that yellow garment is a Ku Klux Clown, excuse me, Ku Klux Klan sign, a KKK sign. That's what he's doing. Now he's put it on there, I think he may have taped it on. And here's the officer's desk and, and he kind of chuckles about it. And he looks at it, chief comes out, he makes some kind of joke. Hey, <laughs> you know, you, what you gonna fire me now? Whatever he said, whatever goofy thing he said. Uh, but this was funny to the police chief. Uh, this was in uh, Sheffield Lake, Ohio. Police chief Anthony Campo has now resigned after this KKK incident on a black officer's desk. This happened last Friday. This was captured by surveillance video inside of the department's booking area. Um, the black officer started working for the department nine months ago. Capo told the mayor that the note was just a prank, not a big deal. Um, he's, uh, he thought it was a joke. How can you possibly think that you could put something on somebody's jacket like that? And especially if they were African American and think it is a joke. This is the most egregious and offensive thing you could possibly do. And it's embarrassing and disgusting. There was a complaint that followed afterward. Um, Sheffield Lake Law Director David Graves brought the incident to bring's attention, um, who's the sheriff, Tuesday and characterized it to the mayor as really serious. The union that represents the police brought a harassment complaint to Graves office. Uh, Bring went straight to Campo's office after learning about the incident. Uh, this is how Campo reacted to the news. Um, I came into the chief's office and he's standing there with a smile on his face. Bring said, he goes, so am I fired? Campbell then announced he wanted to resign effective immediately, used his computer to type his resignation letter and left. Um, yeah, he's gonna be able, it uh, looks like he may be able to uh, preserve his retirement benefits. Uh, this is just insane, but let me remind you of something. And, and, and here's the bigger issue. The bigger issue is that person is in charge of other police completely disconnected, completely insensitive to the reality of racism inside of policing to where he's willing to put a KKK sign on a black officer's desk. But there was something else that I reminded of when it comes to insensitivity. There was a white cop that pulled over a white woman. And when the white woman said, listen, I, I don't wanna move my hands because you know I wanna make sure everything's okay. He tells the white woman, "Oh, don't you know, we only kill black people, here it is. The video shows a Cobb County, Georgia police officer talking to a woman in a car he pulled over on a traffic stop. She's unwilling to move her hands, afraid, she says, of getting shot, and he tells her, don't worry. But you're not black. Remember, we only kill black people. Yeah, we only kill black people, right? All the videos you've seen, have you seen white people get killed? See, the problem is because they think it's a joke is never taken seriously and there is no remedy in the culture of law enforcement. That is the problem. They laugh at, at it rather than analyze it to be better. Jackson, what are your thoughts? Well, actually, my favorite part of the whole video was how the brother came in and laughed at it. Because even though the overall situation isn't funny, it shows how inadequate these people really are in real life such that all of their actions derive from that general sense of insecurity and inadequacy. You know, this guy who's supposed to be a member of the superior race as he waddles in and <laughs> and and you know and, and puts this sign on this jacket like a 12 or a 13 year old. 
you know, like like he's not a full grown adult, like he doesn't understand right and wrong, like he doesn't understand professionalism or the implications of his actions. And you know, it's and as you were saying, you know, such that a guy pulls over a woman, he says, "We only kill black people." You know, are you joking? Are you not joking? The data reveals that more or less, you know, more so than not. So I just, you know, stories like this to me just reveal how these people shouldn't be taken seriously. The issue should be taken seriously, but we need to be stronger than them, and I think we can be. Yeah, and let me, I got some words for the black officer and I thought about this because I don't wanna make him a villain in this story cuz he's really a victim in this story. But when he came back and he chuckled at it, let, let's, let me be very real about what that is. He didn't like it, he didn't enjoy it, but he's in a system to where he feels compelled to figure out how to desperately fit in. And so his response was to chuckle. Now later, there was obviously an actual complaint. This became a big deal and it's still a big deal. Even right now it's a big deal. But that one part where you're not comfortable enough to say, you see this right here, chief. Now this it gotta stop. Now you either give me an apology now or we're gonna have some problems. See that should have been the response immediately. Right, um, or an immediate complaint filed, but he had to think about it because of the culture that he existed. He doesn't exist in the culture of justice, they just say that. He doesn't exist in the culture of law and order, they just promote that. He doesn't exist in a culture that believes right and is right and wrong is wrong. He exists inside of a clique. I'm from Glenwood Road, we would call that a gang. And when the gang leader does something, you don't say anything about it. And the chief was the gang leader, let's call it what it is. And he was in this predicament, but eventually it comes out and it get, it got exposed and the chief has resigned. But this is problematic, not only in policing, but even in corporate jobs all across this country where you have black and brown people, you have females, you have other individuals who have historically been marginalized, who are not heard or taken seriously in the culture of that industry. Absolutely agreed and definitely appreciate that additional perspective because it wasn't just as hollow as him laughing at it like this dude. But again, as you said, it really transpires into just the corporate world and how we have to conform and we have to be more like instead of being ourselves, which takes away our authenticity and our ability to really provide change in any type of environment. So yeah, yeah. well said, you know, the idea from day one was never uh, to, to become a melting pot, that wasn't their real idea. Their idea wasn't unity, it was assimilation. They didn't want you to have your differences celebrated. They wanted your differences to evaporate and you to become what they are. You, you are independent, that's a problem. You are bold and uh, aggressive with what you believe, that's a problem. Because that is antithetical to being assimilated. Uh, and so we're promoting diversity, true diversity in this country.